Hello, everyone, and welcome to our last session on our Research Essentials Fall Webinar Series. Today, we are focusing on Will It Blend? Selecting and Evaluating Sources. So just again, welcome and thank you for coming. This session is being recorded and will be posted to our YouTube page probably this afternoon, if not very early next week. So you can always watch it again if you need to or share it out to anyone who is interested. Uh, today's session will be hosted by myself. I am Megan Kowalski, the Outreach and Reference Librarian, and my colleague, Tricia Clark, our Community College Engagement Librarian. Um, just as a reminder, we will have time for Q&A, both recorded and unrecorded. Uh, but again, thank you for attending today. And if you have any comments or questions as we go, please don't hesitate to put them in the chat. If not, we will get to them at the end. So take it away, Tricia. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. So we are going to be talking about blending sources. Um, but before we do that, we need to find sources. So research is about gathering sources. Um, it's best to get more than you need before you start to write. Just Generally, because it's easier to not use extra sources than it is to find more sources right before your paper is due. Um, so for every page of paper, you want to find at least three to five sources, even if you only end up using one of those three to five sources. So for a five page paper, you should ideally find about 15 to 25 sources, but you may only end up using and citing about 10 of those sources. Generally speaking, finding more sources than you need lets you get the full picture of your area of research, and it also shows you the main trends and themes in whatever topic you are researching. So when you research, you need to give things a brief read through to see if they're going to be useful for your actual research paper. Um, this includes reading the introduction or abstract. The abstract is probably the best place to start. Um, you can also read the results and the final discussion. For the sources that you think are going to be most relevant, you can go back and read the complete um, resource or complete article. As you read, take notes in the margins, highlight, underline um, relevant passages, because this will help you identify the most important points and ideas um, that you can use in your own work. Uh, we just posted, by the way, our webinar on how to read an academic article if you want to learn more about reading those. So for every source, um, it's really important to evaluate what you are reading to see if it's going to be useful for your research. Um, one way you can do this is uh, the five W's. So the who, what, when, why, and where. Um, the who helps you determine the author and their authority. So thinking about questions like who wrote this? Where do they work? Why are they qualified to write this uh, particular piece of information? The what is, what kind of information is it? Is it an academic article? Is it a tweet? Um, both have useful information, but they are used in very different ways. Um, when was a source published is also important to consider. Is the information still up to date? Is it relevant? Is it timely for your needs? Um, so for instance, if you are working on something within the medical industry or a scientific paper, you want the research um, that is the most recent. For historical research, on the other hand, you can use uh, information like old newspaper articles or diaries. Um, why was a source created is also something important to consider. Right? Is it to inform? Um, are they selling something? Is it to convince someone? Is it for entertainment purposes? It's also important to consider who the primary audience is. So for instance, a book for children is different than a nonfiction book for adults, um, even if they're covering the same topic. So your source needs to speak to the audience that you are writing for. And then finally, who published a source? Right? What kind of publication is it? Is it coming from a scholarly journal, um, which by the way, those use peer review evaluation, um, while something like Wikipedia is a source where anyone um, from any kind of background can go in and edit that information. So that's important to consider. Um, in terms of analysis, it's good to note that not everything you find is going to be relevant um, for your research, or even if it's relevant, it may not even be useful. But how do you know? Uh, so this is where you need to conduct some analysis of the sources and think about what would be best for you to use. So for each source, consider the strengths 
of that source. Um, for instance, what are the main talking points? Um, how does it support your argument? Who is the author? And what is their contribution to this particular area of research? For each source, you also want to consider the weaknesses. So what points or ideas are potentially missing? Um, does this source add anything new? Right? Also good questions to consider. And then consider the overall big picture of this field of research. Which sources contribute the most to your research area? Um, and are there sources that are um, duplic duplicates of some that you've already found, in which case it might be best not to use um, an additional source that has similar or the same information? And then finally, you have to remember that you need to include your own voice. So your opinions and viewpoints add to the scholarly discussion. And of course, um, you know, you have to consider which sources let you add your own original work or thought process and which sources you can build off of. Once you do all of that, um, selecting the final sources will require some thinking, will require you to make some hard choices. So it can be really helpful to outline your paper first. This helps you to build the structure of your argument, um, including listing out the points that you want to make, um, which will then help you uh, sort of determine which um, articles you'd like to use. And then you choose which sources support those points. You can even make notes about which codes or ideas you want to use in your final assignment and then refer to those from those particular sources. All right, and now I will turn it over to my colleague, Megan. Yeah. So now that you've found your sources and you've selected your sources, you have to think about actually using them. And before you start writing, it can be helpful to sit down and work out how all of your sources work together. So essentially, how you can blend your sources together to create your argument. And so first, you want to create a simple chart like this, where you can list out the main points in each source. You can also then look at the problems it discusses and the solutions that are offered in each source. Or depending on your subject area of research, this chart might look a little different, but essentially you wanna sit down and get to the salient details and the salient points you wanna share from these sources within your paper. And then to make sure these papers work together, you can blend things together in something like a Venn diagram. And this will help you see where the sources overlap. And so this can help you identify where your sources have similar points or ideas. Or if one source has a point that is not included in the others, you can write it outside the circle and either decide, hmm, this is extra important, or you can skip that resource altogether. You can use sources to build your argument and show how sources relate to one another in many ways. And integrating resources is a three-step process. So you want to introduce the source. This is where you share who wrote it or created the material. An introduction may include adding, you know, the authors of the piece or the title of the work that you are referring to. Then you provide the source itself or a part of the source along with the citation. And in this step, you're usually quoting, paraphrasing, or summarizing your selected source. And finally, you provide analysis for the source. This is where you explain how it relates to your argument or other sources you are including. And you can change the order of these steps. It doesn't really matter how you do it. You can provide the source and introduce it and then provide your analysis or analyze the source, introduce it, and then provide the source. You know, you can change up the order. But what's important is that you include all three steps because that is how you properly integrate and cite the source in your work. And there are many ways to use sources in your assignment. The three main ways you are probably familiar with are quoting, paraphrasing, and summarizing. When you quote something, this is where you share a text word for word within quotation marks in your paper. The quote can be long or it can be short. You may also quote the same source more than once. You can also paraphrase. This is where you share something a source says, but rewrite it or explain the argument or point in your own words. Paraphrasing is a good method to use when it would be too hard to quote or the quote would be unnecessarily long. So if you find that a quote's gonna take up half the page, that's a good idea when you wanna paraphrase something. And a good paraphrase does not just replace words with their synonyms, but actually reworks the material in your own words when you share it. And finally, you can summarize it. And summarizing is similar to paraphrasing, but ten technically you're giving more information about the source. So this is where you succinctly explain an argument or point a source makes in your own words. This is a good way to sum up the point of an entire article or a book chapter or a general scholarly theory. Beyond the big three, there are other ways you can use sources. 
So first you can compare and contrast. You can and should use multiple sources together. And when you do this, you can compare and contrast sources to one another, explaining how they either support or argue against one another. You can find similarities. Another way you can synthesize sources is to show how the different pieces show trends or commonalities. And in this way, you can discuss and highlight you know, the general trend of the research. You can also discuss differences. So when you do this, you show how authors, creators, and researchers think differently from one another or how they have found research with differing results. And finding differences is important because it helps us to show all sides of an issue or topic. And finally, you can demonstrate or illustrate. You can use a source or a group of sources to show how they demonstrate a point or a position you are trying to make. When you do this, you are using your source as a specific example to highlight or show your argument. And next, you want to include your ideas. And this is the third part of the three-step process to integrating sources. It is where you provide your analysis and discussion of the research that you have found or are using. And then depending on the requirements of your assignment, your ideas and thoughts should actually make up the bulk of the work. This is where you add your voice to the scholarly conversation. Some ways you can add your ideas include stating a personal opinion, including a personal narrative or experience, discussing how something made you think or feel, providing original analysis, or discussing how you agree or disagree with what you found. When you're including your ideas, you want to follow the parameters set out by your assignment or your professor's preferences. Some professors are okay with you using first-person wording like I, while others are not, and so you should check before you develop your assignment. And I want to point out that you might have seen throughout this presentation, all of the images were of food. And that's because when you use and select sources, it's a lot like cooking. You can present the same ingredients to a lot of people and everyone's going to make their meal a different way. It doesn't make it wrong or better. It just means everyone has a different experience with using the sources in front of them. So you can think of doing research a lot like cooking. So when you go out and find your sources, think of them as spices, you know, mix them in where you need them and season everything to taste. And so, you know, this was a short and sweet webinar and I just wanna share that um, the library is here for you. So you can always contact us by emailing us at ask at udc.libanswers.com. We also have an online chat. We offer appointments both in person and online, depending on how you would prefer to meet. And you can see us in person at the reference desk. And now we are happy to open this up to questions about either using sources or how to incorporate them into your paper. Giving everyone a chance to either type, feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions as well. Right, not seeing anything come in. I do wanna say thank you again for attending. This was the last webinar in our series and the recording will be available on our YouTube later today. Uh, thank you for attending, and I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, uh, just in case uh, anyone has any questions. Oh, yes. Yeah, I just want to thank you and 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 um, your uh, assistant for uh, Megan Kowalski and Trisha Clark for conducting an exceptional workshop filled with information, and clearly this should be shared with students, faculty, and staff at the university. It was just so well done. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording in case anyone has any questions they prefer to ask off camera. Well, I'm going to.